Hello, my name is Ralph Friedrichs. I'm an addiction recovery coach and the host of the Take Your Life Back Today show. As an addiction recovery coach, I want to share something with you and let me be crystal clear to leave an everlasting impact upon you. Imagine, just imagine being buried alive. You're in a coffin, but you're not, you know you're not dead. You don't know how to get out of that coffin, so you tried lifting the lid, but the enormous weight upon the lid prevents you from opening that lid. Then you think, maybe if I bang on the lid, I'll unsettle all the dirt that's upon the lid, and maybe, just maybe somebody will start digging their way down to help me. This is what it's like to find yourself at the lowest point of alcohol and drug addiction. You know you need help, you know you can't do it on your own, but you don't know where to turn for help. In reality, there are probably people standing by your grave. You just don't know that. You just think you're going to die. Usually, though, people don't think about death when they're, um, when they're, um, habitually abusing drugs and alcohol. In order to feed an addiction, you have to be great at repressing the fear of death. I often ask you, my audience, did it ever cross your mind while you were abusing drugs and alcohol that maybe, just maybe, you might be taking something away that the Lord Jesus Christ gave you called life away from not just yourself, but from the people that love and need you most, people like your children, your grandchildren, your mother, your father, your husband, your wife. With this, let me leave one last thought with you. Don't be the person that I'm reading about from these index cards that's laying in a coffin that waited and waited until it was too late to seek help. Instead, be that person that reaches out for help today and calls me at 631 or text me at 631-599-0218 or calls the hotline at 844-405-HELP. That's 844-405-HELP. And let me help you take back your life. There are people like Larry Geis from the Geis Academy at 516-458-2741. Larry Geis is an addiction recovery coach with over 30 years experience. He will help you from your addiction to your recovery. From your depression to happier times, from your low self-esteem to raise your self-esteem. Larry Geis and I always tell people like you, it doesn't matter where you came from and it doesn't matter where you've been. What matters most is that you're reaching out for help and you're getting that help. Call Larry Geis at 516-458-2741 or go Google him at www.odysseyconsultant.org. That's www.odysseyconsultant.org. Larry Geis from the Geis Academy. Larry Geis and I are standing by, ready to help people like you. Call us. Call him at 516-458-2741 or call me at 844-405-HELP. And together, Larry and I will help you take back your life. Love on the Rocks. Neil Diamond used to sing that song. Why alcoholism and relationships do not mix at all. Most anyone who has drank alcohol excessively on more than one occasion has horror stories of bad behavior. Whether it's a spouse, significant others, parent, child, sibling, or any number of close friends or acquaintances, heavy social drinking usually has its consequences on people's and personal relationships. Acting rude, being over-emotional, flirting, cheating, aggression, violence, general stupor. All of these behaviors will, at some point or another, coalesce into a substandard pattern of behavior which destroys relationships. Those affected feel ashamed, betrayed, and may exhibit general lack of self-respect for the alcoholic. Known as a social lubricant in moderation, alcohol is anything but uh, when abused. Generally speaking, alcoholism and relationships are at odds with each other and here are the reasons why. Alcoholics are deceptive. Alcoholics are deceptive. Alcoholics are liars, plain and simple. Hate to be that direct. Lying serves as a self-preservation mechanism and attempt to convince others that the problem isn't as bad as it seems. They will lie about their bad behavioral patterns of alcohol consumption. They will sneak alcohol when no one is looking. All of this serves to destroy the trust of those around the alcoholic. Alcohol have bad memories. Alcoholics have bad memories. Heavy alcohol consumption impairs short-term memory storage. Many chronic alcoholics back out regularly, a blackout regularly, meaning they won't remember what happened while intoxicated. Quite literally, out of their minds, alcoholics make terrible decisions 
that can affect their lives and the lives of others around them. Also, alcoholics are generally uninhibited and impulsive when drunk. This reduces their ability to make good decisions or even uh, quantify potential consequences. But it's a lot easier to deny the severity of potentially hazard behavior when you don't remember what it was. Alcoholics exhibit extreme emotions. If you've ever seen someone go from having a great time while buzzed to pathetic crying shell of themselves, you've witnessed one of the many effects of alcoholism. This type of behavior often comes across to others as disingenuous or emotional manipulation. There is, this is because the emotions aren't entirely real and certainly do not come from an irrational standpoint. Their thoughts and reactions are fueled by alcohol, which impairs the drinker's ability to regulate emotion. Conversely, some alcoholics are mean, aggressive, or even violent at certain times. Again, the mechanism impaired here is the emotional regulation. While some may put up with the emotional alcoholic, mean drinkers are less likely to receive forgiveness from anyone. Even when sober, the withdrawal effects of alcohol can make the drinker depressed, anxious, and irritable. Alcoholics retreat from social interaction. Once alcohol consumption goes past a certain point, people begin to eschew personal relationships. There are a couple of reasons for this. One, alcoholics, uh, one, alcoholics have often lost the ability to enjoy simple pleasures or engage in activities which they used to enjoy. This is because alcohol hijacks the part of the brain responsible for processing rewards. The second reason is, is because they have to hide their addiction from others meaning they avoid activities in which drinking is not appropriate. Alcoholics have other problems which interferes with relationships. Failure to show up to work or engage in excessive spending on alcohol, especially sitting at bars, may tax the drinkers financially. This can affect relationships with spouses and children and even possibly their households. Alcoholics may also have health problems related to their condition such as lack of energy, digestive issues, or physical injury related to drinking. Medical bills, including expenses such as trips to the emergency room, can add up quickly. Alcoholics are notoriously selfish. Alcoholics don't like to be told what to do and when to do, especially if it means quitting or reducing drinking. They will drink even when it's not con conducive to their positive social interactions they require to maintain relationships. They will spend money on alcohol before other necessities and often shut down emotionally when confronted with the truth. And worst of all, they continue to drink while well, knowing others are terribly worried for their health and safety. Alcoholism and relationships don't mix because alcohol is unwittingly engaged in self-harm but for others, there's a real sense of danger associated with their behaviors. The combination of alcoholism and relationships often leads to dysfunction and failure. This is not meant to criticize alcoholics for people that they actually are, but to show how alcoholism can change a person's behavior, mood, priorities dramatically. Excessive alcohol consumption may literally transform the drinker into a different person altogether and not for the better, my friend. Fortunately, however, the treatment and the atonement and an alcoholic can repair much of the damage done to his or her life and personal relationships. If you or someone you know is an alcoholic, please seek help immediately by calling 844-405-HELP, 844-405-HELP. Love on the Rocks, Why Alcoholism and Relationships Do Not Mix. Most anyone who has drank alcohol excessively on more than one occasion has horror stories of bad behavior. Whether it's the spouse, significant other, parent, child, sibling, or any number of close friends or acquaintances, heavy social drinking usually has its consequence, consequences on personal relationships. Acting rude, being over-emotional, flirting, cheating, aggression, violence, general stupor. All of these behaviors will at some point, 
coalesce into a substandard pattern of behavior which destroys relationships. Those affected feel ashamed, betrayed, and many exhibit general lack of self-respect for the alcoholic. Known as a social lubricant in moderation, alcohol is anything but when abused. Generally speaking, alcoholism and relationships are at odds with each other. And here's why. Because alcoholics are deceptive. They will lie. They will say anything, do anything to continuously drink. Alcoholics have bad memories. There's a thing called blackout. When alcoholics drink too much, they forget everything that has happened as far as or as uh, early as an hour ago. Alcoholics ex uh, exhibit extreme behavior, not genuine. When they break down and cry or complain, it is the alcohol speaking, not the alcoholic. Alcoholics retreat from social interaction. Once alcohol consumption goes past a certain point, people begin to eschew personal relationships. There are a couple of reasons for this. One, alcoholics have often lost the ability to enjoy simple pleasures in life or engage in activities which they used to enjoy. This is because the alcohol hijacks the part of the brain responsible for processing rewards daily. The second reason is this because they have to hide their addiction from others, meaning they avoid activities in which drinking is not appropriate. Alcoholics have other problems which interferes with relationships, such as failure to show up for work or engage in excessive spending on alcohol, especially at bars. They, this can affect relationships and spouses and children and the household. Alcoholics are notoriously, notoriously selfish. Alcoholics don't like to be told what to do and when to do, especially if it means quitting or reducing their drinking. They will drink even when it's not conducive to their positive social interactions. They require to maintain relationships. They will spend money on alcohol before all other necessities and often shut down emotional when con confronted with the truth. And worst of all, they continue to drink while knowing others are terribly worried for their health and safety. Alcoholism is a relationship. And relationships don't mix because the alcohol is unwilling to engage in self-harm. But for others, there is a very se a real sense of danger associated with the alcoholic's behavior. The combination of alcoholism and relationships often lead to dysfunction and absolutely leads to failure. This is not meant to criticize alcoholics for the people who they actually are but to show how alcoholism can change a person's behavior, mood, and their priorities dramatically. Excessive alcohol consumptions may literally transform the drinker into a different person altogether and not for the better most of the time. Fortunately, however, with treatment and anointment, atonement, an alcoholic can repair much of the damage done to his or her life and personal relationship. If you or anyone else that you know needs help with drug addiction or alcoholism, call me at 844-405-HELP. Help is on the way. Help is standing by. Help is available. I am proof of that. I, at one point, was so low in life due to my alcoholism. But what I did is I reached up because I couldn't take life the way it was. I couldn't stand the person I saw in the mirror. I couldn't stand what I was doing to my loved ones. I reached for help. I seeked help. And here I am, a few years later, sitting before you to tell you that there is hope. There is hope if you want it to be. There is a new life if you want it to be. You, my friend, can take your life back. But you need to do the first step. Take that first step. Reach out for help. Realize you have a problem, reach out for help, and things will start becoming better. And reach for God, because God is standing by to help you also. <clears throat> I hope to God you all have the best day of your life, but I hope and I pray you all reach for help if you need the help, and you have a sober rest of your life. And may God bless each and every one watching me, and take care.